and a happy Who Day to everyone. Here in the Cincinnati area, we are super duper excited that our Bengals are going to the Super Bowl today. And in honor of that, I made some uh, tumblers out of black clay with vinyl sticker resist. I actually made these as a little party favor. We have a few friends coming over and my kids are gonna be here. So we're gonna have a little Super Bowl, Super Bowl celebration as we hopefully watch our Bengals uh, go to victory today. So uh, this is a fun little technique if you've never tried it. This is a cone six black clay. It is a pottery supply house clay. I'll put the link in the video description if you're interested in that. And uh, it's a fun thing to try out sometime uh, when you have a chance. So enjoy, drop me any questions that you might have below and give me a big who day if you can. Okay, this cup, I have already added the stickers to, and I'm going to do it to this cup. So this is Bisque Fired Black Stoneware. It has been Bisque Fired Cone 04, and I am just taking my stickers and placing them on. And these stickers are made of uh, vinyl sticker paper. You could use any uh, good quality vinyl um, sticker paper. This is uh, Arteza which I will put a link in the video description, but you could really buy um, you know, any sort of quality uh, vinyl. Now you could cut this out by hand, you, know, you could draw it, cut it out by hand with scissors, but this is uh, cut on my Cricut machine. So I ended up by drawing a design in Adobe Illustrator. Um, I exported it as a PNG um, to uh, the Cricut uh, software and I printed it out and uh, then I cut it and now I'm just putting it on. Now whenever you have a curve uh, you have to really make sure that it is embedded. There is one little trick that I found. And uh, that is if you have a significant curve, say like right here, if it's if it's wants to raise up a little bit, I take a little knife and I just cut a slit so it pushes it down. So any place that I have an issue like that where perhaps it's not really embedding, I'll just take the knife and press it down. So I'll go ahead and uh, do this and I'll come back and I'll show you when I'm done. All right, now I have all of my stickers on there. Again, these have been bisque fired and I have my stickers in place. Now I'm ready to glaze. This is my Coyote Orange Glaze, made by Coyote Clay and Color. And for this, I'm using tongs, and I'm going to be submerging the cup entirely in the glaze. I am going to turn it at a slight angle to make sure that it's deep enough. And then, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it in the glaze for a minute. Because this is a black clay, um, I'd like for the glaze to be a little thicker. Um, if it were white clay, it might not make that much of a difference, but because this is um, black clay, that black wants to show through the orange. So I hold it upside down and I kind of shake it off. And when it stops dripping, then I'll set it to the side to dry.
All right, so after the glaze is fully dried, it's definitely textured here, I need to remove the vinyl. I don't want to fire the vinyl on because uh, if you fire it on, you are gonna get some ash that could uh, disturb your glaze. And to uh, release the vinyl, I usually just kind of take a knife and kind of poke it a little bit until I raise it, or you could do it with a needle tool. Now, as you peel this off, you can see you're gonna get a lot of uh, dry glaze debris uh, that falls. I am doing it in a bowl to capture it, and then I'll throw away my uh, little uh, vinyl pieces. So I only use these vinyl stickers one time. Um, they are still a little sticky, but they're not sticky enough that I could reuse them. Now, the bottom of this I did not wax, so I'm just going to scrape the glaze off. And as I scrape it, I'm scraping it back into my uh, glaze jar, or I could do it in the glaze bucket. I just didn't want to have to bend over because my back is tired. Then I'm going to check for any rough areas and knock those down. I want to make sure that I have all areas smoothed out. And then lastly, I'm going to dry foot it by sponging it off. And as with uh, any time I have a signature on the bottom, I usually put glaze in the signature so it's a bit more visible. My uh, stamp, I did put my Maker's Mark stamp on here. It's incorporated, It's I, I don't remember where it is, but I did stamp these two. There we go. As promised, I was going to show you how I get rid of the slight bit of roughness that is on uh, some of the unglazed patches, which it's really, it's not a problem, but I just really wanted it super smooth. I'm using a Diamond Core um, flexible sanding pad, and uh, I, I wet it down before I did this, but um, I could also do this over the sink. and and I just give it a once over and it makes it super duper smooth. And then of course I'll rinse them off and wash them, run them through the dishwasher before we use them.